My name is Ulrich Schäfer. I'm from Hamburg um, in Germany. Um, I'm an interventional cardiologist from the University Heart Center in Hamburg. And I'm here in the PCR TV studio at, in Paris. And I'm here together with two friends of mine and colleagues. And I'd like first to introduce my partner from the surgical department, Hendrik Trede. He's sitting next to my side. And also there's um, Helge Möllmann, and he's from the Bad Nauheim, Bad Nauheim Kerkhoff Clinic. Um, and he's also an interventional cardiologist. Today we address the topic of um, a new valve that is very interesting and it's coming up into the picture. We all know that TAVI is increasing very quickly. We have now more than 10 CE mark devices in the market and we are talking today about this, the Metas SA device. It's a small company from Switzerland but it's growing quickly. Um, and I would like to first um, maybe ask a little bit about the technology. Helge, can you give us a little insight about um, the new technology of the Metas? Yes, yeah, so Metis um, has a technology which is a little bit different from all the other devices you, um, you were just referring to. Um, the valve, when it is implanted from a transfemoral side, um, is implanted top first and then the down part. Um, in other words, we first um, open up um, the valve in the aorta, not in the annulus like um, we are used with the other devices. And um, only in the second step, um, the valve is um, then safely placed in the annulus. And that gives um, the whole procedure a very predictable and um, predictable outcome. It's very easy um, to use. So what, what are the advantages opposed to, to current other platforms? I think it's um, more intuitive, it's easier because um, you get really predictable results. You can first start um, with an initial positioning, there's no um, interaction with the hemodynamics, so you have a lot of time um, to do that. Um, then once you're sure that you're in the right place, um, you can go on and um, there's no jumping neither down nor up and uh, therefore I think it's a it's very easy, intuitive and uh, safe approach. Do you have to yeah. add something? Yeah, I would also say it's a nitinol self-expanding valve yeah, and if you compare this to the other products that have the same features, the stability during the implant is quite impressive. So you basically just place the valve where you want it to open up and it exactly opens up at that space and this can even be done without rapid pacing. So and this is uh, something really unique with Sanetis due to the technology that Helga just uh, demonstrated with the top to down implantation process. That's quite impressive. So Helga, you did most of the TF cases so far. Could you share us a little bit, some data of your experience? Um, yes, we, we have some data from the CE mark um, trial. Um, these were 90 patients um, treated within the last uh, 24 months. And um, actually the results are very good. We have a low rate of uh, paravalvular leaks um, with more than 95% um, being two or less. And um, we have a very good result um, concerning the pacemaker rate. Uh, the pacemaker rate is below 10%. And I think this is remarkable. Again, because it's a, a self-expanding device, we learned from other self-expanding devices that pacemaker rates are usually a little bit higher. And um, a valve yielding a pacemaker rate below 10% um, is really helpful, especially if we are thinking about treating intermediate risk patients. So now we just talked mm. about TF, uh, transfemoral. So, Hendrik, there's also a TA platform. Yeah, that's a TA platform. The, the big advantage about Cymetis is that you can now use the same valve that you would use for the transfemoral approach, also for the transapical. These, we just uh, underwent the first demand trial for the so-called low-profile system. And this is at the um, edge of the shaft, only 19 French. And this also for the transapical side makes a big step forward because the access can now be really minimalized and there's no need for spreading anymore. It's just a two um, uh, use stitches to close the apex. So this can be done very safe now, even transapically. And the good thing also, you know, from a regulatory point of view, you have just one valve and you can then pick just the uh, according delivery system, go either TF or TA, whatever is needed in your patient. And that also makes your life in terms of stocks in the back room much easier. So uh, on the same side, um, at the same time, the transformal is increasing, TA is decreasing. You think the size does matter yeah. on the apical side? But you know, look at our own center. We have a 20% TA rate. This is, but this is still 20%. And we would not push the envelope too far to really challenge the patients, making them TF necessarily, because we just have that. It's always good to have an exit door, and, and TA is a great exit door. 
especially with the new low-profile system. So this, I think it will... So Helga, you're together with Tommy Walter. So yeah. do, you, do you share the same experience? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think in order to um, help the TA um, approach to, to not only to survive, but to, to have a, a significant share of patients, I think it's a very good point to go to low profile. Because uh, the main issue, I think, is access uh, related bleeding. And uh, that's why a lot of uh, surgeons are a little bit reluctant to use um, the TA approach. And now we have this uh, really nice low profile approach and uh, therefore the risk of um, transepical complication even decreases, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, to, to maybe to wrap up, um, maybe we should also quickly talk about pacing matters. Um, I think we learned that we don't need to do rapid pacing in these two access um, procedures, TA as also in TF. We, I yeah. think we shared that in, in common. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we, we first, uh, when we first started with this valve, uh, we always used rapid pacing during the final release, namely uh, the step where uh, the valve jumps into the annulus. And, um, but now we learned that th there is no need for that. So the position stays completely stable even without rapid pacing. And, and therefore, um, I really believe that we can safely omit uh, this step and um, go for an, a final implantation of the valve without um, rapid pacing which adds further safety to the um, whole procedure. Yeah, and in addition, it's also doable in very horizontal orders, what is for a nitinal device again pretty challenging normally, but with the Sametis valve, due to the stable position in the annulus, it's also doable in these more strange anatomies. So it's also, I think, an additional advantage that we can take into account. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, we had a perfect live case demonstration from Bad Nauheim um, on Tuesday this week. Um, it was a horizontal case, and the valve just stayed in place. Yeah. So ease of use, I think, is, is a very important matter in even complicated anatomies. Ulrich, can you probably elaborate a little bit on the PV, uh, PVL rates? Because this is one of the most discussed issues, of course, in TAVI. What is your impression on the Sametis valve in terms of PVL? Yeah, I had to learn that, that this device is really working fine. Um, so only 5% being modded and less um, um, is moderate and more is, I think, is a really good number. And, uh, for the self-expanding devices. Mm -hmm. And the company is also now trying to get even better to, to try to even more um, have a more sophisticated technology with an outer skirt, um, uh, some sealing membrane, and even to get rid of these last 5% of the cases. Mm -hmm. So I think it's working fine. Um, yeah. And as we, we addressed, it's easy to use, it stays in place. And so this is, for me, it's a promising expanding, self-expanding technology. I think we, we had a nice discussion and we addressed many new topics and um, so to wrap up I think we learned that this is a new technology and it's easy to use and um, with that I think um, we have more and more evidence that we have good data and with this I'd like to thank again my two colleagues from Germany and I'd like to thank everybody. Thank you.